Hi, I'm Nathan Myers, and this is our ICAST presentation on Low Rank Millimeter Channel Estimation using One Bit Receivers. Today's presentation is based on joint work with Kayla Tran and Professor Robert Heath at the University of Texas at Austin. In this video, I'll first start with some motivation and background on one bit millimeter wave receivers. Then, I'll discuss about the channel estimation problem, focusing on the algorithm design and training design aspects of this problem. Finally, I'll discuss how our solutions perform using simulation results. I'd like to mention here that our code is available online at the GitHub link shown below. I'll now start with some motivation on 1-bit millimeter wave receivers. Receivers in conventional MIMO systems use a pair of full-resolution analog-to-digital converters at every antenna. When such an architecture is used at millimeter wave, it results in a substantial amount of power consumption. The high power consumption is due to the fact that millimeter wave systems use wide bandwidths and large antenna arrays. Imagine hundreds of ADCs operating at several giga samples per second. The power consumption can be in the order of several watts and this is a big problem. One approach to cut down the power consumption is to reduce the resolution of the ADCs. In the extreme case, this resolution can be as low as 1 bit. Such 1 bit receivers offer a great promise for wideband millimeter wave systems. In this paper, we focus on MIMO channel estimation using 1-bit receivers. This problem basically has two components to it. The first component is algorithmic in nature and requires developing optimization techniques that can estimate MIMO channels from just 1-bit measurements. The second component is related to training design where the focus is to construct pilot waveforms that result in better channel reconstruction. So let's get started with the system model for channel estimation. In this system, we consider a linear array of n antennas at both the transmitter and the receiver. The 1-bit receiver shown here has a pair of 1-bit ADCs at each and every antenna. Each pair essentially samples the INQ components of the complex baseband signal. The channel between the transmitter and the receiver is modeled using a narrowband channel matrix of size n cross n. Let's say the transmitter sends out a pilot vector t. In this case, the receiver acquires a channel measurement vector y, which can be expressed as a 1-bit quantized version of h times t plus Gaussian noise. Note that this 1-bit quantization operation is performed element-wise on the vector h t plus v. An example of this quantization is shown here. Now, consider a setting where the transmitter sends out pilot vectors t1, t2 and so on up to tn in sequence. For such a transmission, we can define a training block given by capital T. Now, when the transmitter sends out this training block, the receiver acquires a measurement block y, which can be expressed as a 1-bit quantized version of h times capital T plus v. Here, v is a Gaussian noise matrix. The goal of our paper is to estimate the channel matrix h from 1-bit quantized measurements in the block y. Before I get into the details of channel estimation, let me explain about structure in millimeter wave MIMO channels. In this paper, we consider a geometric ray-based narrowband channel where the matrix H can be expressed as a linear combination of several rank 1 matrices. Each of these matrices correspond to a propagation ray in the environment. MIMO channels at millimeter wave exhibit special properties such as sparsity in the angle domain and low rank structure. These properties are due to clustering in the propagation environment and are very specific to millimeter wave channels. In this paper, we focus extensively on exploiting the low rank nature of millimeter wave MIMO channels. As shown in this figure, most of the singular values of the channel matrix are approximately zero, which means the channel has fewer degrees of freedom and the question is how to exploit low rank nature of millimeter wave channels together with the channel measurements to get a reasonable channel estimate. Prior work has focused on 1-bit MIMO channel estimation using several interesting tools such as deep learning, maximum likelihood, or even 1-bit compress sensing. Interestingly, there is no prior work that has exploited the low rank nature of millimeter wave channels in a 1-bit setting. Although 1-bit matrix completion has been studied from a theoretical perspective, the direct application of these ideas to a real millimeter wave setting can result in poor performance. 
So clearly there is a need to develop new techniques for low rank channel estimation in 1 bit receivers. In this section I am going to talk about some of the algorithms that we developed for this purpose. Before I get into the details of these algorithms, I'll first introduce the notion of pseudo channel and its corresponding log likelihood function. The pseudo channel matrix G is defined as the product of the channel matrix H and the training block T. Note that this pseudo channel G is a complex matrix of size n cross n. The definition of the pseudo channel allows for a simpler measurement model when compared to the previous case. As seen here, the received block Y is simply a 1 bit quantized version of the noisy pseudo channel. An interesting property exhibited by the pseudo channel is its low rank structure, which follows directly from the low rank nature of the channel edge. At a very high level, channel estimation in a framework occurs as follows. First, the transmitter sends out a unitary training block T for the receiver to acquire channel measurement block Y. Then, the low rank pseudo channel G is estimated from Y. Finally, the channel H is estimated by simply multiplying the pseudo channel estimate to the right by the conjugate transpose of the training block. Now the question is how to estimate low rank pseudo channel G from Y. To this end, we define an optimization variable corresponding to pseudo channel as X. X is a matrix of size n cross n and has complex entries. The log likelihood in this case is defined as a function that measures how consistent the matrix X is with the received block Y. Due to the Iadic Gaussian assumption on the noise block V, the log likelihood can be decomposed into two parts, where each of these parts correspond to the real and imaginary components of X. A close form expression for LYR of XR is shown here. A natural approach to solve this problem of estimating the pseudo channel is to maximize the log likelihood function Ly of x subject to a low rank constraint on x. Unfortunately, this low rank constraint results in an NP hard optimization problem. Prior work has relaxed this low rank constraint into a nuclear norm based constraint for tractability. And an interesting observation to be made here is that the log likelihood function is a concave function of x, while the constraint set here is a convex set. This allows the use of standard convex optimization tools to solve the pseudo channel estimation problem. I'll now explain how projected gradient ascent can be used to solve the optimization problem shown here. Note that X is a complex matrix of size n cross n and the gradient corresponding to X is also a complex matrix which can be computed as follows. The projected gradient ascent algorithm works as follows. It starts from a coordinate xt and moves xt to a point zt plus 1 along the direction of the gradient. Note that the movement is in the direction of the gradient as the objective is to maximize the log likelihood function. Now suppose if zt plus 1 falls outside the nuclear norm ball as shown here, it is simply projected down into a coordinate xt plus 1 that lies within the nuclear norm ball. Now this projection involves a singular value decomposition and a simplex projection. The algorithm executes this procedure over and over until a convergence criterion is met. Now coming to the complexity of the projected gradient ascent algorithm, the gradient step has a complexity of order of n square while the projection step has a complexity of order of n cube due to the singular value decomposition algorithm. One approach to overcome the high complexity of projected gradient ascent is through the Frank Wolf method. The Frank Wolf method considers a linear approximation of the log likelihood at every iteration. Specifically, it computes the matrix DT such that DT is very close to the gradient direction while it still lies within the nuclear norm ball. Then the new coordinate XT plus 1 is a convex combination of XT and DT. The algorithm executes these iterations over and over until a convergence criterion is met. An interesting observation to be made here is that the gradient computation step and computation of dt both have a complexity of order of n square. Now this low complexity is achieved by using power method to compute the rank 1 approximation of the gradient of Ly of xt. To summarize the one bit channel estimation procedure in our work, first the tx transmits a unitary matrix t, the receiver acquires measurement block y and finally you could use either the projected gradient ascent algorithm or the Frank Wolf method to estimate the pseudo channel G. Okay. Then once the pseudo channel is estimated, channel estimation becomes a trivial problem.
Now that we have a good algorithm for low rank matrix completion, the next problem to focus on is training design. That is, what should be the training block T for better channel reconstruction? To answer this question, let's look at one bit matrix completion theory from prior work. This theory tells us that it is hard to recover low rank matrices which are spiky in nature. Let me explain this using an example. Consider a Dirac matrix with a 1 in the first location and 0 everywhere else and another matrix 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1. Both these matrices can be observed to have a rank of 1. The Dirac matrix is spiky in nature as its energy is concentrated in a single location. As the zeros in the Dirac are at the threshold of 1 bit quantization, the algorithm can easily confuse the Dirac with other low rank matrices. Such an issue, however, is avoided with the second matrix. In our work, the pseudo channel is estimated using matrix completion based theory. Therefore, the problem now is to find training blocks which result in less spiky pseudo channels corresponding to millimeter wave channel matrices. In our paper, we considered two candidates for the training block T. One was the discrete Fourier transform based block, which is commonly used in standards like 1180, and the other is based on Zadov tube matrices, which was proposed earlier in prior work. For a simple millimeter wave channel matrix with all ones, it can be noticed that the DFT based block results in a spiky pseudo channel, while the ZC based block results in a constant magnitude pseudo channel. In fact, for the channel data set that we used for our simulations, we noticed that the peak to average power ratio of the pseudo channel G was about 16 dB and 4 dB with DFT and ZC training blocks, which means that the ZC training blocks result in less spiky pseudo channels when compared to DFT based blocks. Throughout the presentation, we considered a training block of size n by n where the number of pilots transmitted NP is equal to the number of antennas which is N. Now, how can we adapt this training solution when NP is different from N? For NP smaller than N, the TX simply transmits NP columns from the training block T. When the number of pilots transmitted is larger than N, we first express NP as B times N plus D, where B is an integer and D is an integer smaller than N. The TX transmits B training blocks that are phase rotated versions of T. The phase rotation based training results in distinct channel measurement blocks at the receiver. Furthermore, such a training results in low complexity gradient computations when compared to the use of generic training. I'll now discuss simulation results related to our work. We considered a narrowband MIMO system with 16 antennas at both the transmitter and the receiver. Millimeter wave channels in our simulations were derived from the NYU channel simulator for a non line of sight scenario. We used the normalized mean square error and the achievable rate to evaluate the performance of our algorithms. As seen in this plot, the proposed techniques achieve a lower NMSE than the message passing based or maximum likelihood based methods. The better performance of our methods is because low rank recovery techniques learn the sparsifying dictionary while compressed sensing techniques suffer from sparse approximation errors. As shown here, our algorithms result in a reasonable achievable rate for a wide range of pilot transmissions. An interesting observation from this plot is that the use of a Zadov tube training block results in a better performance than the DFT block. This is due to the fact that the pseudo channels corresponding to the Zadov tube training have a lower PAPR than those corresponding to the DFT based training. Thank you for watching and I'd be happy to take any questions related to this work.